Hey what's going on developers, welcome back to the Next.js full course. In this episode we are going to use Google OAuth authentication in our Next.js application. And also at the end of this video I'm going to provide a simple front end react app to show you how we can log in with our Google account from our front end application to our Next.js back end application and then how we can get our JWT access tokens and refresh token from our Next.js back end application in our front end react application so i think that's it enough with the introduction and let's get into it all right in the first step we need to go to the google cloud console api to get a new client id and also a client secret so i go to the console.cloud.google.com and here you can select your project if you haven't created project before just click on the new project here and set a name for your project for example i'm going to say sakura dev nest.js course all right and then just click on the create after that you can select your new project here and then go to the api and services so let me make it a little bigger and then go to the credentials here and then click on the configure constant screen and then here select the user type you can choose the external here here's are the descriptions for the internal and external you can learn about the user types here so just click on the create here and we should put a name here for our app i'm gonna just go ahead with the sakura dev we need to put an email here just put my email and we can put an app logo and also app domain they are not necessary and here we just put our email again and just click on this save and continue again here in this page i just click on this save and continue again and again save and continue all right we're done here and just click on the back to dashboard all right now we can create our google client id and secret so i click on the credentials here and then click on the create credentials we need to have a oauth client id and set the application type to web application and just put a name for it I just go with the default one and here in the authorized javascript origins we need to put the uri or web application so since we have just a local dev server i'm going to put it as http localhost 3000 all right and then here we need to specify a callback api for our application so actually this callback api is an api in our application and when the sign in process is successful the google call that api of our application and sends us the user data so here i'm going to put it as localhost 3000 and then slash auth slash google and then slash callback so we need to go back to our backend application and define this api for our application we're going to do that later in this video all right now we're done here and just we need to click on the create here and here as you can see we have the client id and also the client secret so we need to copy them and put them inside our env files of our nest.js application all right so i just copy the client id and open up our nest.js project go to the env file and just create a variable named google client id and also google secret then get back to the console api copy the client id paste it here and also copy the client secret and paste it here in front of the google client secret let's save this file and we're done with this section and now we can move on to the next section where we are going to create a configuration file for accessing the values of these two variables google client id and google secret all right so let's do that so i go to the config directory of the auth directory and create a new config file i'm going to call it google oauth.config.ts all right so if you haven't watched the episode about env variables and configuration file i recommend you to see that episode first so you understand deeply what we're going to do here for creating the config file but i'm going to do that from scratch real quick so you can understand it here if you want but for more details go to this episode of our nest.js full course so here we're going to export a factory function which actually returns a configuration object that has the value of our env variables so we're going to do that with the register as function i'm going to export default and then call the register as function which comes from the nest.js slash config and then for the name space here i'm gonna just name it google oauth all right and then we need to put our factory function so it's just a arrow function and returns an object which contains the client id client secret and also the callback url all right now we can get their values from the env file so i'm gonna just put the process that env that and then 
go back here and copy this variable google client id and the client secret use this variable just replace that with the client secret and also let's put our callback url to env file and retrieve that from the env file so just name this variable to google callback url and go to our env file and create the google callback url with its value as you can see the value is slash auth slash google and then slash callback which is the same callback url that we have just specified in the google console api page all right let's save this and also save this config file now we need to go to the auth module to register this config file here in the import section just use the config module dot full register function and then put our google oauth config file that we have just created so let's just import that google oauth config as you can see it comes from the slash config slash google oauth dot config dot ts now we can access to this config file in order to get the value of our env variables okay before moving forward to the next section if you're enjoying this video up to this point please like this video in order to support me grow faster on youtube your likes really matters to me and i really need your help in order to grow on youtube you can also subscribe to the channel for more comprehensive courses on node.js frameworks thanks for supporting me and this channel all right now we can create our google strategy so before doing that we need to install the dependencies so i open up the terminal and here i'm going to say npm i and then install passport google oauth 2.0 all right you need to install the app nest.js slash passport and also the passport package but since we have already installed these packages in our nest.js project we don't want to install these two packages all right and then we just need to install the types of the passport google oauth so let's clear this up and here i'm going to say npm i and then dash d because it's a dev dependency and just put the add types slash passport slash google oauth 2.0 so let's install that okay now let's close this off let me just a little zoom in now let's go to the strategies and create the google strategy so I just name it google dot strategy dot ts and here we need to export a class we're going to name it google strategy and it extends the passport strategy so i just use the passport strategy function which comes from the add nest.js slash passport and then pass the google oauth strategy so its name is strategy and make sure that you import this strategy from the passport google oauth 2.0 as you can see the name of this class is the same with the other strategies like passport jwt and passport local so make sure that import this strategy class from passport google oauth and then we can put the body of our class and before writing the body of the class let's mark it with the injectable decorator now it's a injectable class and can be managed by the nest.js dependency injection container and then inside the constructor we need to call the super function of the strategy google oauth strategy and pass the configuration which are google client id google secret and the callback url so here in the constructor we're going to call the super function and then inside it we need to set our configurations as you can see we don't have autocomplete here inside the option object of the super function so in order to access to the properties of this configuration object here i just instantiate a new instance from the strategy class so here i'm going to say const just call it test and set it to new strategy which is our google oauth strategy and then pass a configuration object and here as you can see we can access to the properties of our configuration file so we need to have the client id and also client secret and then the callback url and also the scope so i just copy this configuration object and put it here in the super function and i just remove this test object here now in order to initialize these properties we need to use our google oauth configuration file that we have just created in the previous section we need to inject our configuration into this class so inside the constructor i'm going to use the at inject and pass the google oauth config dot key 
and then we can say private Google configuration and set its type to config type. And here inside this generic, we're going to set type of the Google OAuth config file. All right. Now we can access to the Google OAuth configurations through this dependency. So here for the client ID, we're going to say Google configuration dot client ID for the client secret. We're going to set it to Google configuration dot client secret. And for the callback URL, we're going to set it to Google configuration dot callback URL. All right. So in this way, we can access to the Google configurations, which actually loads the env variables about the Google OAuth. And in the scope property here, we're going to specify the data that we need to get from the Google API about the user. So we want its email and also its profile. All right, we're done with the configuration of the Google OAuth. And now we can write our validation function in the Google strategy here. After the constructor, we're going to have an async function validate, and then it gets some parameter that comes from the Google API. So it takes the access token, which is going to be a string refresh token, which is going to be a string as well. And also the profile of the user. And since we don't know the shape of the profile, which comes from the Google, we just set its type to any, and then we're going to have a done function, which its type is the verify callback that comes from the passport Google OAuth. And now inside this function, we're going to check from our database that whether this user is already inside our database or not. If it's not in our database, it means that this user is logging into our application for the first time. So we need to insert it in our user table. Otherwise, we can just retrieve the data about the user from our database and just return it from this function. And the returning object from this validate function will be appended to the request object under the property name user. So we can access the user object in the auth controller. I will show you how you can do that in a minute. But before checking our database, let me log the profile object that we're going to get from our Google API. So just log the profile here. And now we need to just go to our auth controller and create the Google login API and also the Google callback API. All right. So let's go to the auth controller and then inside it, we're going to create a Google login API. So it's a get request. It is going to be under the route slash auth and then slash Google and then slash login. And we're going to mark it with the at public declarator because we don't want to guard this API with the JWT guard that we have created in the previous episodes of this video. So as you know, we have enabled the global authentication in this project with the JWT. So every API in this application is guarded with the JWT guard, except that the APIs that are marked with the at public declarator. All right, now let's create a function for our Google login. I'm going to call it Google login and it takes nothing and we just need to guard it with the Google auth card. So let's create the Google auth card. Let me clear this up and here I'm going to say nest G G U which stands for guards and it is going to be an auth directory and then guards and it is going to be Google dash auth. So let's create this guard and then inside the guards directory, as you can see, we have the Google auth and this is the guard that we have. So we just need to extend the auth guard and set the Google parameter to it. All right. We can now use this guard in our auth controller. So let's get back to the auth controller and mark this API with use guards. And then inside it, we're going to pass the Google auth guard. And also we need to create the callback URL. So let's just copy them. And here it is going to be on the route slash auth slash login and then slash callback. It should be the same as the callback URI that we have configured in the Google console API page. And then we just name the function to Google callback. And as you can see, we also need to mark it with the Google auth card. So let's save this and run our application. All right, so let's go to our browser and here I'm going to go to the slash auth slash Google slash login and we've got an internal server. So let's get back to our VS code. And here we have an unknown authentication strategy, Google, and that's because we haven't registered our Google strategy in our auth module. So here in the providers list, after the refresh strategy, set the Google strategy here. All right, so let's save this and open up our terminal. Let's get back to the browser and refresh the page. And you can see we are redirected to the Google sign-in page and choose my account here. 
And as you can see, we're now redirected back to the slash auth slash Google slash callback. All right. We have an unauthorized error here, and that's because we don't return the user object from our validate function in the Google strategy. So we're going to do that in the next section. But now let's get back to our terminal. And as you can see here, we have the profile object in our terminal because in the validate function of the Google strategy, we just log the profile object here. As you can see, it has the ID display name and also a name object which contains a family name and also a given name the list of emails and also list of photos all right so now we can use this information to check in our database if such a user with this email is already inside our database or not if it's not we can just insert that to our database and then return it and if it is in our database we just return that without needing to insert it in our database again all right so let's handle that in the validate function so here in the validate function of the google strategy we're going to check if the user is inside our database or not so for doing that let's go to the auth service and create a new function for that we're going to call it validate google user all right so it's an async function let's mark it with the async and it takes the google user and just set its type to the create user dto all right so inside it first we're going to check if the user is in our database or not so we're going to find it in our database i'm going to say const user and then use await here then call the user service this that user service that find by email and just pass the google user dot email now we can check if the user is inside our database we can just return it from this function so here i'm gonna say if user is not now we'll just return it from this function but if the user is null which means that the user is not existed in our database we need to insert the user into our database so we just return await this that user service that create function and then pass the google user so the find by email function just use the user repo that find one function and find the user based on the email and also the create function uses the user repo that create function and pass the user dto to it and then save the user with the user repo all right now let's get back to the auth service and this is our validate google user now we can go to the google strategy and use this function so we're going to say const user equals to await and then we need to call the validate google user of the auth service before doing that we need to inject the auth service in the constructor so here i'm going to say private auth service and set its type to the auth service class all right now we can go back here and use it this that auth service and then that validate google user function and here we need to pass the email of the user and set it to profile.email so we're going to set it to profile that emails actually the first email because the profile that emails is a list so we're going to just use the first email inside it and then use the property value then we're going to set the first name to profile that name that given name all right for the last name we're going to set it to profile that name that family name we're going to set the avatar url to profile that photos actually the first photo and then pass the value and also we need to set the password of the user to an empty string because here we don't have the password of the user but if you do that you need to validate the username password in your local strategy so if the user doesn't provide its password you need to just return an unauthorized exception otherwise anyone with an empty password can log in into your application so i go to the local strategy and in the validate function first we're going to say if password equals to empty string we're going to just throw an unauthorized exception and inside the exception we're going to send a message please provide the password now we can go back to our google strategy and set the password to a empty string and then after that we can just return the user from this function just like the previous strategy the user object here will be appended to the user object under the property user or we can just call the done function so here we can just call the done function the first argument is a error object which in this case we don't have any error object and the second parameter is actually the user object that we're going to pass it here it will be appended to the request object under the property 
user. So here, make sure to pass the user object that you've got from your database to the down function. Do not pass the profile object directly to the down function because the profile object has a ID that is initialized by the Google API, which is actually the ID of the user inside the Google. But here in this application, the ID of the user is different from the ID of the user inside the Google API. So we just need to pass the user that we've got from our database, not just the plain profile. All right, let's save this. And now we can go to our auth controller and inside the callback, now we can access to the user object that we've just returned it from the validate function of the Google strategy. So here we can just use the rec here and then access to the request. And here we can have the rec dot user object. So now here we can use this user object to create our JDBT access token and refresh tokens and send it back to our client. So here we're going to say const response and set it to await this dot of service and then call the login function, which actually takes the user ID. So we can just set it to rec dot user dot ID and then it creates an object that contains the ID of the user, the access token, and also the refresh token. Also, it hashes the refresh token and save it inside our user table. So later when the user sign out from our application, we can revoke the refresh token of the user. You can learn about how we can revoke the user's access token in the revoke token episode of this course. All right, now just get back to the auth controller. And since we use await here, let me mark it with the async. Now this response object contains the ID of the user, access token, and also refresh token. And now we need to send them to the client. And here I want to remind you an important tip. You should not send back the access token and refresh token that you got from the validate function. These are actually the access token and refresh tokens that are created by the Google API. You cannot use them in order to pass the JWT strategy. You should create your own access token and refresh token based on your secret key that we have configured in the previous episodes of this course and then send them to the client so the user can use that JWTs to access our protected API. So again, do not send the access token and refresh token that you've got in the validate function of the Google strategy to the client. Create your access token and refresh token and then send them back to the client. So here I get back to the auth controller and now we need to send the access tokens to the user. So in order to do that, we need to call an API inside our front end application. So we're going to access to the response object. I use the res decorator and I'm going to call it res here. Let's import that from the SGS slash common and we're going to redirect the user res dot redirect and then call the URL of our front end application. So I'm going to show you a simple react front end with a just login button. So we need to pass the URL of the front end application. It is running on the local host on the port 51. 73 okay and then inside the query params we're going to pass a token variable for example and set it to response.access token so let's put this inside the back text and then here we can pass the response.access token in the same way we can pass the response.refresh token let's save this and let's run the application and let's call the login api here we've headed to the sign in page of the google choose our Google account. And as you can see, now we are redirected to the localhost 5173 with our generated access token. So now let's run our front end application to get that JWT token in our front end application. So now I open up a really simple React application. It just has one page after TSX. And inside it, we just have a button. In the on click event of this button, we call the handle Google login. And here we just redirect the user to the local host slash 3000, which is the address of our Nest.js backend server, and then slash auth slash Google slash login. So let's get back to the Nest.js application. We just call this API here. All right. We don't need to put anything inside our Google login function, but make sure that you guard it with the Google auth guard. After the login process with Google is successful, this API will be called. And here we just redirect the user to the front end application and put the token ID inside the query parameters of the URL. Get back to the React application. You can see here in the use effect, we check the 
euro params and get the token variable from the euro params and check if the token is available we just save it inside our local storage and then we can use it in our subsequent request to our Nessus backend application and here i know that the local storage is not a safe place to keep the token you can encrypt the token or you can keep it inside a http only cookie but this is out of the scope of this video okay so now let's run the react application let's open it in our browser click on the login with the google we can see we are redirected to the sign in page of the google choose our account get back here and again we go back to our react application but here if i open up the console and go to the application section and go to the local storage you can see we have a jdbt token inside it with the generated token from our backend nest.js application so yeah that's it the way we can log in into our backend application from the front end application and get back the jdbt tokens all right so let me do a quick recap here get back to our nest.js application first we need to get the google client id and google client secret put them inside the env variables and then create a configurations file which actually returns an object that contains the client id client secret and callback url then we're going to create the google strategy pass the configurations in the super function of the oauth strategy and then in the validate function we're going to take the access token refresh token profile and then we're going to have the done function we check in our database if the user is already inside our database or not if it's not it means that it is the first time that user is signing in into our application so we just insert them into our database if the user is already present in our database we just return that object and then call the done function the first parameter is the error function we're going to set it to no because we don't have any error here and then in the second parameter we're going to pass the user object that we've got from our database all right instead of this done function we can just return the user object these are the same all right this user object will be appended to the request object under the property name user and then inside the controller the auth controller we're going to have a google login api we mark it with the google auth guard and then we're going to have a google callback again we need to mark it with the google auth guard we can access to the rec object and from the rec object we can access to the user object that we return from the validate function of the google strategy we generate our token with the login function and then redirect the user back to our front end application and put the tokens inside the query params of the url then inside our front end application this is the react application in the use effect we check if inside our url we have a token params we're going to save this inside our local storage then just remove this query params from the url that's it in the subsequent request to our protected api of our nest.js application we can use this token as our jwt access token so yeah this was a practical way of how you can use the google oauth authentication in your nest.js application and if this video was helpful for you please like this video because it will help me grow faster on youtube and i really need your support in order to grow faster on youtube if you haven't subscribed to the channel you can subscribe to the channel and if you think this video can help someone you know feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues all right stay tuned for the next episode of this nest.js full course and have a nice time bye bye